When the rain becomes lethal, siblings Simone and Raz must hide in their father's bunker until supplies run out, leading to them joining a group of survivors. Their companions, Leah and Jean, hide while watching vehicles patrolling the area. When Jean stands up, Leah scolds him as they'd be killed if they're spotted. This makes Jean feel stupid, but Leah assures him that he's a nice person. Jean disagrees as he recalls how he once collapsed on a field where a young girl found him. In an abandoned bunker like their father's, Simone realizes that Rasmus has an infected wound. She gives him pain medicine while Beatrice provides him with some water. Martin tells Simone that the only way they'd get to the next town to find a doctor is through the bridge, which would expose them to strangers who hunt down other survivors. Seeing Beatrice with Rasmus, Martin talks to her privately and accuses her of toying with the kid. Suddenly, Simone arrives and reports that Rasmus can't walk, so she suggests hijacking one of the stranger's vehicles. Later, Simone draws out the strangers and leads them into a parking lot, where the rest ambush them. Patrick suggests killing them, but Simone refuses to, and Martin agrees as he wants to interrogate the strangers. At the bunker, Beatrice asks if Simone likes Martin, but Rasmus thinks that Beatrice and Martin are a couple. However, she notes that no one owns anyone. Rasmus argues that there's still love, but Beatrice thinks he's innocent to believe in that. At the parking lot, Martin presents the strangers with a map he stole from another stranger. He questions what's outside the quarantine zone, but the men don't cooperate. Inside their trunk, Patrick learns that another group is arriving, so he warns Martin. Jean panics upon seeing one of the strangers with a snake tattoo, so he urges Martin to kill them. Seeing no point in arguing, Martin tells the rest to leave before he shoots the men. Soon, they use the stranger's truck to cross the bridge. During this, Jean recalls waking up after being rescued by a girl named Vilda. He joined her family for lunch, and Vilda asked them to stay. Her parents insisted, so Jean accepted. The group arrives at the town, where a woman named Johansson aims a gun at them. Martin shows her the injured Rasmus, so she agrees to help. While Johansson stitches up Rasmus' wound, Jean remembers how he stayed with Vilda's family until the strangers arrived. Vilda's father dealt with the strangers while Jean hid with Vilda, covering her mouth to keep her quiet. Soon, the stranger shot her father, so Vilda struggled and Jean tightened his grip. They took Vilda's mother and Jean noticed the snake tattoo on one of the men's arm. When they left, Jean realized that he had suffocated Vilda to death. At present, Rasmus is recovering and Simone shares with Johansson that they're heading to Sweden to meet with her father, Frederick Anderson, who works for a research organization called Apollon. Hearing this, Johansson suddenly recommends a tetanus shot for Rasmus. Johansson takes the siblings away while the rest stay. To their surprise, Johansson leads them into another Apollon bunker like their father's, confirming that she used to work there too. Inside, the doctor straps Rasmus to the chair, and Simone realizes that Johansson's ID from the bunker scanner claimed that she's from Division 45, where her father worked. Suddenly, Johansson chokes her, saying that Frederick killed her children. Meanwhile, Patrick looks around the doctor's house while Beatrice and Leah insist on looking for the siblings. After they leave, Martin notices trucks outside, and Jean sees the man with the snake tattoo, confirming that Martin didn't kill them earlier. Panicked, Jean rushes out and shoots the tattooed man, leading him to get captured. Martin hesitates as he watches, but Patrick hurries him to leave as they're outnumbered. Meanwhile, Leah and Beatrice see Patrick and Martin running to them. Thinking that Jean is dead, Leah panics, but they urge them to leave. In the bunker, the siblings are bound, and Johansson recounts that Frederick didn't listen when she warned him not to attack nature. As revenge, she records a video to show Frederick what she'll do to Rasmus. Simone begs as Johansson prepares to inject Rasmus with something until Patrick shoots her and frees the siblings. Simone grabs Johansson's syringe before they head to the woods. They eventually find an abandoned town to stay in. Patrick confronts Martin about not killing the strangers earlier, blaming him for getting Jean captured. He stresses that he followed Martin for six years, but Martin is listening to Simone instead. That evening, it rains as the group mourns for Jean. Leah recalls how she and Beatrice first met Jean after he had just buried Vilda and her father, thinking they were his family. Meanwhile, Simone joins Martin and admits that she was wrong about sparing the strangers. Martin, however, thinks it was the right thing to do. Behind them, Beatrice watches as Simone holds Martin's hand. The next day, Simone struggles to remember where the next bunker is since their location wasn't on the Apollon map she memorized. Patrick gets pissed, so Leah pulls him away, thinking he's on edge because of Jean. They reminisce about their friend until they hear bells nearby and find an ominous manor. By night, the group hesitantly approaches the manor when a man named Mark invites them inside, but they must surrender their weapons. With the storm looming, they have no choice but to agree. Inside, they find a group of survivors. 
Seeing Rasmus in pain, the people become worried, so Simone assures him that he isn't infected. One of the women, Karen, leads them to the room but locks them inside. Patrick regrets going to the place, so Martin asserts that they're leaving once the rain stops. For now, the group takes the opportunity to rest. By morning, Karen takes them to their garden, where they grow their crops. The group is hesitant given that rainwater is contaminated, so Karen eats a tomato to show them that it's safe. She then ushers them to the shower room, assuring them that they clean their water. She proves this by dousing herself in one of the showers. The rest are afraid that Karen will get infected, but Leah doesn't move, so Karen assures her that it's safe to believe. After Karen leaves, Martin points out that it's suspicious for people to offer them tomatoes and showers at a time like this. Still, the group sees a chance at a better life, so they excitedly take a shower after so long. The others end up playing around in the shower, though Rasmus sits back, still bothered by his wound. When the siblings are alone, Simone teases her brother for looking at Beatrice. Suddenly, Rasmus winces in pain, alerting Simone that his wound is worsening. Meanwhile, Martin sneaks into a storage unit where he finds clothes, including a child's shoe. At the same time, Leah, Patrick, and Beatrice happily eat breakfast until Martin storms in. He questions Karen about the child's shoe, pointing out that there are no children in the manor. Mark steps in and points outside, where children are playing. Martin still accuses them of being a cult, but Mark claims that they've simply chosen to forget about their past, as what matters is the present. Later, Leah apologizes for Martin's behavior but assures Karen that he means well. Karen understands that some are just afraid of love, and Leah agrees that they're not used to it. The woman invites Leah to join them, adding that tomorrow is their group's monthly celebration, where they have a nice dinner. She also comments that Leah reminds her of her daughter. This reminds Leah of when she tried to sneak out to attend a party. Her mother caught her, worried about Leah interacting with boys. Leah accused her of making her feel like a freak, so she left. Meanwhile, the group's doctor, Karsten, checks on Rasmus's wound. He then takes out a syringe, insisting that Rasmus needs to be sedated, but Simone refuses. When he looks away, Simone steals the syringe. In their room, Simone gives Rasmus morphine but insists that it's the last one he'll get. As she checks the labels of the syringes, Rasmus steals a few more pills from her bag. Simone then confirms that Karsten's medicine is from Apollon but is different from Johansson's. She later confronts Karsten if he's connected to Apollon. She shows them the syringe from Johansson which immediately scares Karsten. Simone demands to know what's in it but Mark takes it and insists that she let go of the past. Meanwhile, Karen helps Leah meditate. Leah admits that she did something terrible, but Karen encourages her to let it go. Because of this, Leah recalls when she arrived at the party and her classmates spiked her drink. Soon, Leah started acting wildly and was taken to a bedroom. When she woke up, Leah found a video of her fooling around with boys posted online. Scared, Leah called her mother for help, but she disowned her daughter because of the video. At the manor, Martin sneaks into the basement and finds people carving up something. Suddenly, a woman sees him and tells him to leave. Upstairs, Martin reunites with Simone, who tells him that Karsten is from Apollon. Suspicious, Martin takes Simone to the basement but finds it empty. The next morning, Martin orders the rest to find their weapons and leave, but Simone shares that Karsten is from Apollon, catching the other's attention. She wants to talk to Karsten first, and the others agree to stay. Later, Karen helps Leah meditate as she remembers the day after the party. She found her schoolmates on the lawn, laughing at her video. Desperate, Leah prayed to God for help. Suddenly, it started raining, killing her classmates. The frightened Leah then picked up her mother's call, who panicked and decided to get her. However, as soon as she stepped out of the house, the rain killed her. At present, Leah mourns as she believes she killed her mother, so Karen comforts her. That night, the group gathers for dinner, and Mark reminds them to eat in silence to honor their meal. Meanwhile, Martin checks the walk-in freezer in the basement and sees a man's torso. After dinner, the group starts picking wrappers from a pot. Mark explains that this will let them choose who will gratify them with their body next. This leads to Leah realizing that they just ate a person. Instantly, Patrick throws up while the others become horrified. Mark assures them that it's the ultimate love that they can share and whoever sees a flower on the wrapper will be the chosen one. Suddenly, Martin arrives and punches Mark. Karsten walks in and aims a rifle at him, so Martin backs off. Karsten insists that the others must stay until they found a flower, so everyone checks and Leah gets chosen. They take Leah away while the others are held at gunpoint. However, Karen decides to take Leah's flower, sparing her life. She thanks her group for taking her in, so she offers her life to them. Leah cries, begging for Karen to stay with her, but the woman tells her to live. With that, Karen is taken away. Finally, Mark allows them to leave. 
Before leaving, Simone demands information from Karsten, and he confirms that he knows Frederick and that they destroyed the world. Mark stops him from saying further, so Martin pulls Simone away. Mark then tells Karsten to leave since he's returned to his past. Karsten insists that they have to stand by what they've done, but Mark closes the door on him. In the woods, Karsten finds the group and tells Simone that what's in the syringe is something he thought could save everyone but kill them instead. He then injects himself, and they watch as he convulses until Martin shoots him in the head. Simone then uses a piece of cloth to grab the syringe before leaving. Days later, Patrick recalls being fired, dumped by his girlfriend, and told by a counselor that she can't help him. In the morning, he joins Martin by the lake and wonders if this is the best place for them since they don't know what's on the other side of the wall. Martin, however, reminds him that they only stayed inside the quarantine zone because they didn't know there was another place to go to. Patrick notes that they wouldn't have met if they hadn't gotten stuck there, but Martin comments that they're not exactly friends. Suddenly, they intercept a signal from the stranger's radio, alerting them that they're getting close. They hear movement from the woods, so Martin aims a gun until they see a dog. Still, Martin aims to shoot it since it's infected, but Patrick throws a rock at it to scare it away. Later, Martin reveals that the strangers are getting close, so Simone thinks it's dangerous to go to the next bunker. Still, Martin insists that they need food. He then gets distracted upon seeing Beatrice and Rasmus together. Jealous, he insists on leaving now. Rasmus, however, claims that he can't move because of his wound. Simone suggests that they get the supplies from the bunker instead, but she has to go with them since the scanner will recognize only her handprint. With that, Rasmus suggests letting Beatrice stay with him while they go. Before they leave, Martin and Beatrice talk privately. He warns her that Rasmus likes her, so Beatrice asks how Martin feels. To her disappointment, he says that he doesn't know. She then points out that he and Simone get along better than they ever did, which makes them laugh as they admit to this. After the others leave, Rasmus shows Beatrice that his wound is almost fully healed. He admits to faking it earlier so he can be alone with her. Later, the two hang out. He then takes out the pills he took from Simone, but Beatrice convinces him that he doesn't need them anymore. At the same time, the others arrive at the bunker, which is under a structure. However, Patrick points out that someone has been there since there's an empty jug outside. Still, Simone opens the bunker, so Patrick casually goes inside while Martin hurries to ensure that the area is clear. Patrick then starts eating the supplies, but Simone notices a kid's drawings, realizing that a family lives there. She tells Patrick they can't eat their food, but he insists that it isn't their problem. Leah agrees with Simone, so they leave to look around while Patrick takes a liquor bottle. While looking at the drawings, Patrick recalls when his father gifted him a van, only to reveal that it was because he was throwing him out of their house. Meanwhile, Leah finds a stuffed toy in a room, so they believe that the family will still return since a kid wouldn't leave it behind. At the same time, Patrick finds a tablet full of videos. Simone decides to take supplies but leaves some for the family in case they return. However, Patrick hands her the tablet where they see a doctor telling a little girl to leave just before he injected her father with the virus. While another doctor is watching through a video call, the man starts convulsing. Thus, they confirm that he's not immune. The other doctor asks for more subjects, so his colleague suggests using the girl. Simone defends that Apollon is looking for a cure, that's why they were injecting people. But Patrick points out that they used the girl too. Martin urges them to leave, but Simone gets pissed and slams the tablet before leaving. They head out only to see that it's raining. Meanwhile, Rasmus and Beatrice watch as a dog searches for food outside. Beatrice comments that animals aren't affected by the virus, but Rasmus reminds her that they can still pass it on to humans. Rasmus's hand starts shaking, and Beatrice figures that he's having withdrawal from the medicine. In the bunker, Martin sees a drunk Patrick playing with the ball. Martin joins him, but Patrick recalls that he said they weren't friends. He claims that it's not what he meant, but Patrick walks out. Patrick remembers how he was passed out in his van when the first contaminated rain poured. When he woke up, the rain had stopped, and he found dead bodies on the beach nearby. At present, Patrick joins Simone outside. He asks if she prefers staying in her bunker, but she admits that she was scared there. Patrick then comments that at least they have each other, and Simone assures him that he has them too. Still, he doesn't think it's the same for him. While watching the rain, Patrick recalls that he was hopeless. Simone assures him that they need him, so they must stick together. Meanwhile, Rasmus and Beatrice dance, unaware that the roof is starting to leak. When they kiss, the rain finally drops from the ceiling, hitting Beatrice in the cheek. Rasmus pushes her out of the way, but it's too late. At the same time, an emotional Patrick kisses Simone, but she pulls away. Knowing that he's drunk, Simone tries to get him inside the bunker, but he pushes her into the rain. At the cabin, Beatrice cries as she believes that she's now infected, and Rasmus kisses her so he can die with her. 
Outside the bunker, Patrick orders Martin to shoot Simone, but Leah blocks him. She insists that they're not sure if the rain is dangerous anymore. She then backs into the rain, exposing herself to it. Patrick then tries to steal the gun, but Martin pins him to the wall, and the two women retreat into the bunker. Meanwhile, Beatrice and Rasmus get intimate. Later, Simone and Leah can find themselves in a separate room while the men watch them. After a while, Martin is confused as to why they aren't showing symptoms yet. This makes him wonder if the rain is finally safe. Martin releases them, and a frustrated Patrick admits that he pushed Simone into the rain. Martin takes the risk and steps into the rain for the first time. He doesn't get sick, so Leah and Simone join him in rejoicing that the rain is finally safe. During this, Martin kisses Simone. Afterward, they rest inside the bunker. A drunken Simone confesses to Martin that the man in the video call was her father, so she decides that they can't go to Apollon anymore. After letting her sleep, Martin exiles Patrick since he tried to kill Simone. He then closes the bunker, leaving Patrick alone. As he walks into the woods alone, Patrick recalls driving his van to an outer shop where he met Martin days after the first rain. Seeing him smoking, Martin asked for one, noting that he hadn't found a working lighter in ages. This made him glad to have met Patrick, which the man laughed at since no one had ever said that to him. In the morning, Rasmus wakes up to the dog from yesterday sniffing around. He checks on Beatrice and mourns upon finding her dead. Patrick arrives, but upon seeing Beatrice's corpse, he hurries away, afraid of getting infected. Alone, Rasmus carries her body to the bunker while Patrick gets captured by the strangers. Subscribe to watch more videos like this. Turn on notifications. And leave a like it really helps the channel out. Thank you for watching.